Okay, so in order to truly discover that greatness within us, I believe that it creates, there are some necessary things that come into play. One of the things that I've talked about in the past is the, the excitement and the understanding that the, there are different levels of dedication. And I believe the more that we are dedicated to something that we're working on, the more we discover what it is that is special and unique about us. So if we just stay at home and we operate in our comfort zone, then as a result of that, we don't really discover how good we are because our discoveries are always on the other side of our comfort zone. They're always in the areas that we have not gone yet and the things we have not done yet or discovered yet that we are supposed to do. And every time we step into a new realm and we try something new and we get a little surge of, it, it causes us to consider a new possibility and that maybe we have the ability to go to another place. It's about setting a goal, reaching a goal, setting a goal, reaching a goal, setting a goal, missing a goal, and then re setting that goal. How many of you have ever missed a goal and then not reset a goal? Anybody in this room done that very thing? I am right with you. So I want you to know that there are many times when we set a goal that we really know when we set the goal that we're maybe not highly dedicated to it. <laughs> I remember when we, I would go to advances when I was, even when I was a director, and Jan Harris was um, my senior national sales director, and at the end of the advance, yes. Yeah. At the end of the advance, she would always have us come up to her and she would take our hands and look into our eyes and she would ask what our goal was. And um, I remember thinking, I'm going to come up with like the coolest goal. That's going to be oh so impressive. Too bad I'm not going to do it. Because you really do know the difference between something that sounds like fun, like it should be and it could be, or whether it's really something that your heart is completely dedicated to. Um, Craig Rochelle has written a book um, that he talks about three levels of dedication. And the first level of dedication he talks about is that people will buy into a dream or a vision or a movement as long as there's something in it for them. And his position with that is that we will show up to be part of something as long as it's gonna be entertaining for me, as long as I'm gonna get what I kind of need out of the situation, as long as his church has a Starbucks, as long as a pastor delivers a really good message. You will show up as long as it's something that's in it for you. That's only a surface level of dedication because if you ever interpret that it, what's not in it for you the way that you want it to be for you, then people bail on it. They don't stay dedicated to it. Are, am I making sense? A level two dedicated person is someone who will dedicate to a level, a level of dedication to a dream or of movement or a vision or a passion um, as long as they can contribute comfortably. Now this is the one I really want you to think about because in order for you to see your dreams through or your goals through and to really discover what is great within you, it's going to require a little more because potency and potential is something that comes out when you stretch yourself and that is when you tap into it. So when you only contribute when it's comfortable, only go to success meetings when it's convenient for you, only go to something when all the pieces fall into place and it looks like it's going to work well, then as a result of that, you really are only dedicated to a certain level. And if all the pieces don't come together and it requires more, then you don't go forward. So the depth of dedication is, is that you really need to make a decision that you're gonna be highly dedicated to your goal. And I believe that attending success meetings every single week makes all the difference in the world. Do you so agree with me? I can honestly tell you that as a consultant before I became a director, I didn't ever one time 
one single time miss a success meeting, regardless of whether I was doing great or if I missed the goal or I wasn't on it or nothing happened. I was there every single week because I was not only committed to my own success and for me to go to those meetings, but I was committed to the other women who were at those meetings. And I was committed to my director. And going to that is what caused me to discover some of the things within me that I didn't know were within me. I don't believe we discover greatness unless we're highly dedicated. That's when we discover those talents and those gifts to the maximum. So the third level of dedication are those people who are willing to put their whole heart into it. And you know yesterday I talked about on stage that my dad gave me the advice to just throw my heart over the line. Full heart into it is not doing it 24-7. Full heart into it is that you will take your entire conviction and you will put it into that goal and you are going to see it through no matter how long it takes or how dedicated you need to get to it. It is an absolute and it's a decision that you make and it's a line in the sand and you're not gonna back down. That's wholehearted. And then when I was reading those three different levels of dedication, I remember thinking to myself that in Mary Kay, we have a fourth level of dedication, and that is the level of national sales director. I believe the national sales directors in our company not only give their entire heart to their business and their goals and their vision and dream, but we give our entire hearts to you. And the reason that we do is because Mary Kay Ash gave her entire heart to us. And we would not be national sales directors today had we not come up under the umbrella of understanding what she did to commit her life for the sake of this movement and this cause and transforming women's lives. And we got to hear the sound of her voice and understand what true determination and dedication look like. So this is what I want you to consider. National sales directors do not become national sales directors and then become a level four dedicated person. They become a level four dedicated person first. And as a result of the depth of that dedication, they become a national sales director. Does that make sense? So, how many women in this room who are not Red Jackets are going to be Red Jackets, Red Jacket consultants? Okay. So here's the deal. You don't wait to become a Red Jacket and then become highly dedicated in a depth of dedication. You have to become dedicated to that goal first and then reach the goal. Does that make sense? So it's all about knowing what's in it for you. What's in it for you is that when you reach a goal, it builds your internal self-confidence. And the question is, if you were 10 times more confident than you currently are at this moment in time, would your life look different than it does right now at this moment in time? Okay, I want you to turn to your AB person and really quickly, I want B people to tell A people one thing that would be different about your life right now if you were 10 times more self-confident. Go ahead. Okay, now A people, I want you to grab her shoulders. I want you to look into her eyes. And I want you to say to her, that is how I see you right now.
You have to see yourself as who you are going to be, not as who you currently are. It is the person that you are growing into. That's what potential is all about. And then you start acting like that person and you start thinking like that person. I remember Will Smith, one time when he was interviewed, he said, one of the greatest gifts that I was given to me from my parents when I was growing up is that in our home, we never talked about our circumstances. We only talked about our dreams and our hopes and our future. My parents would never allow us to talk about what was currently not happening or what was challenging or what was a struggle. They only allowed us to talk about how it was going to be. That is powerful. That puts in a hope spirit that causes us to want to move forward. So I'm going to tell you a story. I have two stories to tell you. One story is that after I got into Mary Kay and I started to do my, oh, first of all, do you want to know what my, there was like, there's an addendum onto the story about my principal. Would you like to hear it? <laughs> so I was at a star consultant event in Omaha, Nebraska, and I was the speaker at that event. Years later, I was a director, and, um, and at the end of that event, what I did not know this, my principal and his wife were in the audience. because she was a brand new Mary Kay Beauty Consultant. No. When I was waiting, up, and I did not know they were in the audience, and I'm so glad I didn't tell them that story. Just more evidence that God loves me. So, standing at the door when everyone was leaving and he walked up to me face to face and I stepped back and he said I want you to know I am so proud of you and I'm so glad you did not listen to me now Here's the cool thing. I didn't need that in order to become a success because I had my own dream, my own belief, my own vision, and my own direction, my own fortitude, my own dedication. But those are the sweet moments in your life that God has planned and you didn't even know he had it planned. Like he already had that worked out. <laughs> Do you know that he works in the background on your behalf? Do you know that he opens doors for you? And on the other end of the doors, on the other side, is whatever you need to equip you for the next journey to the next door. And so that we feel right now that we're lacking in something that is going to enable us to reach where we want to reach or be where we want to be. And we focus on what we feel like we're lacking when we are lacking in nothing. Nothing. You are highly equipped and you have equipment within you that you have no idea that is going to be uncovered and discovered as you move forward. There is nothing to fear. You should be anxious for nothing. Yes? Okay, so story walking. As a consultant, I was teaching school. And we only had that car with the hole, it had a hole in the floorboard. And when you would drive over water and the old car that Brian and I had when I started in Mary Kay, then the water would splash in up through the hole in the floorboard all over my clothes, or it would be dirt and it would fly in my teeth and I would go pfft, 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 while I was driving that car. The car had the hole in the floorboard, I would stop and when it would snow, snow would fly in and through my car and it would like, I'd have to scrape the inside of the windshield and the outside of the windshield. Um, that was the car that I started my Mary Kay business with. And when I started making the money from my parties, I started, we started paying off debt and making progress. And it was very exciting, but we were very, 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 very far in debt. Very, very. <laughs> so at one point, it started to feel like it was a big black hole. And no matter how much extra money I was making, it was like disappearing into that debt hole. And so I had um, a certain amount of money. It was a $20 bill every single Monday. And that $20 bill was going to get me through for 
my lunches and some of my gas for all week um, for my teaching school. And so I dropped Brian off, I dropped Jennifer off, and I went to a, a store in um, Omaha, Nebraska called Hinky Dinky Grocery Store. Hinky Dinky. I don't think it's so strange you guys have Piggly Wigglies. And I was buying grapefruits for the week because I had grapefruits for lunch. I literally did. That was my lunch. And so I went into the grapefruit bin and I had my $20 bill in my hand and I was looking for my grapefruits for the week and I got them and I went to the cashier to pay for them. And when I got up there, I realized that I didn't have my $20 bill in my hand anymore. And so I went back to the grapefruit bin and I started throwing grapefruits in the air like a crazy person because sometimes when you don't have the money, you start to act in desperation. It's interesting the things that go on in our head when that happens. And um, I remember vividly walking out of that grocery store and I didn't have my money. And I remember looking down at the grating outside the door of the grocery store that was muddy and wet and snowy. And I remember the feeling of hopelessness. I remember getting into my car and the tears started to flow. I was already a consultant and I was making the money and I did have a dream and I was excited about what was going and I was making progress but sometimes you have those moments when you don't feel like the progress is either happening fast enough or you forget you're making progress and as the tears started to flow those still wonderful words came to my heart and this is what he said I have given you everything to change your situation. You just need to do it. And that was the moment that I made a deep commitment. I thought I was committed, but I was actually kind of as a folly doing my business, having fun, making money, and wasn't realizing that the depth of the commitment was missing. Because the difference between just doing it for the heck of it, a little there, a little here, having fun with it, getting excited about it, or being highly committed to it is entirely different because of the depth of the commitment will make a difference on how quickly things happen, how quickly things happen. And from that moment on, I got highly, deeply, this is it, there's nothing else. I'm not gonna pursue anything else. I'm not gonna work on anything else. This is my future, this is the direction, and this is my hope. This is my hope. Now, the other part of that is that I want you to enjoy the process, not just the journey. Enjoy the process. Are you with me there? That means you learn to find the things that you love in the basis of doing your business. All the aspects of it that you love. I travel a lot out of choice because I love to travel. I love to go to my director's homes. I love to get to know their families. I love the fact that I have the ability to expand the wealth of my relationships, which are the greatest gifts in my life because of this company. I can go all over the place and do that. And as a result, of my traveling, there are challenges and frustrations that happen in airports, but I choose to look for the good things. I choose to look for the mom who's having trouble with her stroller and she needs help to get through TSA. I look for the elderly women and men who can't get their luggage. There's always people that you can help. If you look for the good, then good things will happen. Where is your intention placed? You gotta expect the best to happen, and if it doesn't go your way, then you ask yourself the question, what would the powerful you do next? What is the creative flow? What's the answer to plan A or plan B or plan C or plan D? Are you willing to go to the next plan? Are you going to give up and throw your hands in the air and not believe that it's possible? Because there is a way. And the cool thing is that if you make a way for the next A, B, C, or D, 
Q, R, X, Y, or Z. If you make yourself all the way through there, then the fun that happens as a result of the fact that you keep going, the people that you meet as a result of the fact that you keep going, the revelations that you have and the skills that you build are what gonna cause you to discover the greatness that is within. So this year, I don't want you to set a goal and say, I hope that I will. I want to, I think that I should. I want you to say, I will make this happen this year. I will, I will make this, make this happen, happen this year. This year. Yay! Thank you.